Hey guys, here we go into a video discussing Sergey Kovalev versus Eladia Alvarez 2, um, which is going to be a fantastic fight. Um, I'm really, really excited about it. And I picked, just to get it out of the way, I picked Kovalev to beat the crap out of Eladia Alvarez. Um, the film study, it all showed, you know, that Eladia Alvarez is kind of. While he has good technique, he's fast, and we've seen that he has some power. You know, even though his knockout ratio doesn't depict that, um, that uh, that for all intents and purposes, Alvarez, in spite of those attributes, is, is a pretty basic fighter. Um, and all the way up until Kovalev uh, got his, his uh, bell rung and knocked out, uh, he was dominating Alvarez and beating him to the punch. Um, and in the driver's seat for all of the actual boxing, um, in spite of the fact that the commentators, you know, who don't know how to watch boxing, don't understand what they're watching, um, in spite of what they said, that it was a close fight, and it was close, like, in terms of um, punches landed, the output wasn't very high, there were a lot of lulls, you know, but, um, but it wasn't actually a close fight, and I'll kind of show you guys what I mean, but um, first... I just want to replay the knockout, or the, you know, the real knockout punch. And then we're going to kind of go, and we're going to talk about how we got to this point um, with Kovalev on his butt. So, the beginning of the fight had Alvarez coming in, shooting some one-twos, right? And just flashing the jab. Look at how Kovalev gets his right glove up there, right? And Alvarez goes to the body instead um, to start opening Kovalev up, right? Then we have Kovalev, and this is really important too. Watch Kovalev's foot, right? Watch as he steps forward. And as he steps forward, Alvarez elects to throw punches um, and starts setting his punches up. Um, it's a timing that, that Kovalev has, as you see here. Watch, watch really closely as he steps forward, and then he starts to attack. But look at how Kovalev is the one that's in charge right now. He's the one dictating what's going on. Um, and Alvarez is the one that's being reactive. Um, and I know a lot of people think that the boxer is all, or the counterpuncher is always reactive. Um, but as we saw with, with Adrian Broner, that's not the case. You know, um, he was the counterpuncher. And um, being the counterpuncher and being the one that's the reactive fighter, uh, Manny Pacquiao showed that the proactive fighter is easily able to get the, other, the opposing fighter out of position to land their shots. And that's where Kovalev was all night, fainting here, coming forward. And now this is what I'm talking about. Kovalev looks to step forward, and Alvarez catches him with that jab. Boom, right? And it's off of Kovalev stepping forward and looking to, looking to start setting up a rhythm to start letting his shots go. And Alvarez picks up on it. You know, this is not his first fight. He's seen it before. But then Kovalev starts saying, okay, let's see what's going on here. And now watch as Kovalev starts circling. And getting him different looks. Look at how, look at how he's about to step on that front foot, and he takes that short step, and he faints Alvarez, and he starts walking forward, and he's very, how do you say, um, I don't, he's very cautious at this point, right? He's looking to bait and set stuff up off of that timing that he knows that Alvarez has, right? Look at how he steps forward, right? How he steps forward, whoops. And then he knows that a punch might be coming because that's where Alvarez is looking to throw his punches. So he starts ducking down, baiting that shot in, uh, effectively taking away Alvarez's only ability to control the space between him and his opponent. Um, because if, if you notice something about Alvarez, he doesn't have a very active guard. He's not fainting a lot. He's not giving Kovalev a lot of different looks. You know, sometimes he's giving like a, a little bit of head movement side to side, but he's not... He's not presenting any danger for Kovalev to make Kovalev think when he's standing in front of him. So Kovalev has all the opportunities to think about setting up his own offense um, as long as he's mindful that that timing right there, that he needs to be mindful of it. As you see here, um, Kovalev steps, faint him, and he's about to step again, and then Alvarez explodes out of his guard to throw those shots. Um, again, but Kovalev is very able to pick up on it, and it stops Alvarez from being very effective, and it doesn't give 
uh, Alvarez has a lot of opportunities to score throughout the round or feel safe scoring throughout the round uh, because of this. And Kovalev, him, Kovalev himself feels just fine fainting, fainting, being very tentative. I guess that might be the word. And then just letting his hands go when he gets close enough, right? Look at how he's going forward, forward, tapping his front foot, and he gets to land a free shot to the body. Um, and Alvarez has to work so much harder for all of his offense. Meanwhile, Kovalev just has to come forward, faint, 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 double faint, and then shoot the jab to the body. Again, fainting him. He knows when Alvarez is looking to attack him, and he's able to bait those shots and stop Alvarez from being, being effective. And that stops Alvarez from feeling confident. Now, the second round opens up with Alvarez going to the body with that jab instead of going to the head. So when Kovalev starts coming forward, look at he's about to take that step. Alvarez goes to the body instead. He's able to mitigate uh, Kovalev's opportunities for slipping the shots and setting up his own counters uh, simply by making an adjustment, a great adjustment from him. Then right here, he tries to do the same thing. Ko uh, Kovalev assumes that it's going to be the same punch, the same jab to the body, and he goes for this uppercut. Luckily, Alvarez's jab hand catches it. Otherwise, it could have been a knockout right there as as Alvarez was shifting his head over the other side. Um, but then he almost gets caught with the other shot too. I don't think Alvarez's right hand lands in that situation. But um, there was a lot made about the jab in the first fight um, by Alvarez. But what a lot of people didn't realize is that Kovalev was landing his jab as well. As you see, Alvarez almost falls down after getting hit with this jab. And you can see that he gets stunned and he gets hit with the jabs. And Kovalev was on the same timing. Again, you know, because Alvarez is not doing a lot when Kovalev is pressuring him and throwing those punches, they don't look like exchanges. Even though Kovalev is landing free punches, because he's got the feints, he's fainting, he's making Alvarez think, and then he's attacking. Uh, but he has complete control over the fight, in spite of the fact that Alvarez is nowhere near done, right? That's not what I'm saying. But uh, then we get to this scene where, again, Kovalev is coming forward on that front foot. Watch Kovalev's foot. He steps down, and then Alvarez says, oh, my turn to attack, shoots the jab, and then lands a great right hand. Um, and now this is exactly what happened um, at the end of the fight. This is the, this is the punch that knocks Kovalev down and gets him ready for the knockout. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue going over the film that I've prepared um, to kind of talk about why that didn't happen sooner, but also how we get there in the first place. And then we're going to talk about my prediction for the fight, uh, some really interesting stuff. But Alvarez now, he thinks, oh, I've got a way to attack him. I've seen what I need to do. So he shoots the jab, and he goes for that overhand right, but uh, he doesn't actually throw it. Uh, uh, Kovalev sees it coming. He says, oh, Alvarez is looking to shoot the right hand after the jab and then land that shot. So Kovalev, again, ducks down. He makes an, another adjustment because now he's figured out that Alvarez knows that the timing isn't working. Now he's taking away, so he's taking away Alvarez's timing. Now he's taking away Alvarez's right hand. Now when he sees the jab, he ducks and moves his hand, right? Gets out of the way. And he's still able to land his own shots and get Co and get Alvarez to be the one that is uh, reactive to him and allow him to set up his punches basically for free. And again, the jab comes and Kovalev ducks the right hand. Beautiful, right? Doing all the right things, making Alvarez really have to work and really have to think for his offense. Alvarez makes another adjustment. He knows that Kovalev is ducking the shot, so he tries to throw a right uppercut, then a left hook to the body. And then still winds up not doing the greatest in that exchange. And then they trade jabs at the end, right, off that same timing. But Kovalev, again, maintaining control of the fight, right? Stepping, baiting the shots. He knows when, when Alvarez is looking to fight. He knows when Alvarez is looking to time him. And he's able to take those opportunities away. Now, I think this is going to be a little 30-second span um, right here. And we're just going to watch it. And as you see, Alvarez doesn't really know how to set his offense up. You know, he's not fainting. He's not probing. He's just allowing Kovalev to come forward on him and throw his punches. You know, there's a lot of this in the fight because Alvarez, like I said when I said he was a basic fighter, he doesn't know how to set his offense up. He doesn't know how to get his opponent out of position before he throws his punches. Meanwhile, you have Kovalev who, who's like, okay, faint, 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 and then baits that shot 
slips it and then is able to throw his own right hand. He doesn't land right there, right? But that's not the point. The point is, is that it's so easy for Kovalev to set his offense up um, and mitigate his opponent's offense. Um, and he did a fantastic job of that in the first fight. Even though Alvarez is still able to land some kind of tricky shots like that um, to keep Kovalev kind of off balance. But again, every time that jab comes, even when the jab lands, like you see in this scene, right? Kovalev is able to duck the right hand and get away from it and stop Alvarez from really being effective. And you can see the dividends that pays as Alvarez's frustration boils over it, not being as effective as the announcers were saying he was by kind of throwing Kovalev out of the ropes. But again, going to the body instead of the right hand over the top. And then again, Kovalev sees the jab, ducks down, gets under it, and then they start trading. And this is, a, this is in a long exchange in which they start fighting and Alvarez is kind of like, what? And they just start fighting. And you can see that in spite of the fact that Alvarez looked like he was doing really well at the beginning of that, and he's doing well with his jab, he starts to get pieced up because he doesn't have... He's just not as good in those, those instances for setting up your punches and long engagements. Lots of fainting, lots of probing. He has to do a lot more thinking than Kovalev because Kovalev understands how... He, he knows more about fighting than Alvarez does. He understands that you have to get your opponent out of position before you throw your punches. And from what it looks like, the only way that Alvarez knows how to get Kovalev out of position is fainting the jab and then hoping that he can land the left hook to the body because Kovalev has taken the right hand away um, or waiting for the timing in which sometimes he is a success. He is successful with the timing as you see here, right? Where he eats the, he catches him with the jab on that same front foot timing, right? Stepping, even though he eats a jab his, of his own, right? And you can see him clearly get rocked, right? Um, but, um, but Alvarez doesn't have the knowledge, the know-how that Kovalev does to be able to feel comfortable to come in, faint, faint, and then start throwing these big bombs once he's closed the distance and confused Alvarez enough. Um, and the whole third round is just kind of a, a beating for, for Alvarez, and it gets worse in the fourth round. But as you can see, Alvarez still trying to fight on that front leg timing, right? But he still can't put it together. Gets fainted out of position, and then walks into a right hand here, trying to close the distance away from the right hand. And Kovalev makes it look so easy. Now, again, you know, Kovalev and a beautiful shot. Watch this, you guys. Kovalev's... Kovalev's going to step on the front foot, right? Oh, man, I don't think I have the whole clip in here. But he steps on the front foot, baits the jab from Alvarez, and then comes in with his own uppercut uh, jab combo uh, to really throw Alvarez off and to let Alvarez know, hey, it is not okay for you to throw that combination. I did not say that was okay. And just continues to dismantle Alvarez's offense until the fourth round when he starts walking forward and just, you know, kind of dominates the rest of the fight. But as you can see, Kovalev is able to feint him, probe him. Oh, this is the seventh round, actually. Um, and you just have a lot of scenes like this, you know, where Alvarez was kind of getting beaten up. Um, but the reason I'm skipping to the seventh round is because this is the round where Alvarez starts going forward. He starts pressing Al uh, Kovalev, and even though he's trying to time him on that shot and Alvarez or Kovalev is doing a great job of countering him, piecing Alvarez up all night... Alvarez figures something else out in this fight, and I was so excited when I saw it, when I was re-watching this, because I've been wanting to do film on it for a while, um, but um, Kovalev getting knocked out, just, it broke my heart so much that I couldn't do too much, but, um, um, but as you see, he's starting to fight him going forward, and he fights him on the same timing that he's been fighting him on, and he, he realizes, oh, this is futile, this is... This is exactly where Kovalev knows how to fight, and he's going to eat shots like this. So what I want you to see is that he starts attacking Kovalev when Kovalev is going backwards. So he's on his front foot, he's on his back foot now, and now Alvarez goes in there and catches him with the jab. And he still gets pieced up with those shots after, but he lands the jab the first time, and Kovalev isn't able to counter the jab right away, like in this scene, when the, as soon as it comes out and he eats that right hand. You can see he goes forward, and as he's rocking back, he eats that shot, but he lands it. Now, it's really fascinating because, again, Kovalev easily piecing him up, catching him with these shots, but he's rocking forward, now rocking backward, rocking forward, backward, forward, 
back, and now he shoots the jab to the body, and before Kovalev was throwing the right uppercut, he was throwing the left hook, he was doing the right hand over the top, but because Kovalev is going back now, Kovalev doesn't have an answer. Notice he's not on his front foot, um, distributing his weight to his front foot, uh, which is the natural tendency when you throw your right hand, you transfer all your weight from your back leg to your front foot, into your heel, and Kovalev is off of his timing there, and Alvarez notices it. What else does Alvarez notice here? The jab comes out, and Kovalev is no longer ducking down and getting away from the right hand. He's no longer worried about the right hand or countering the jab. So what does Alvarez do? He's pressing forward, and watch Kovalev right here. Whoops. Hold on. So rocks forward, and as he's rocking back, Alvarez elects to attack him when he's not on his front foot. And look where Kovalev's jab comes from. You know, it takes him so much longer to get that shot out that Alvarez is easily able to land that right hand right there. Um, and again, just watch the timing, right? Forward, back, and then he comes in for the, for the big punch, for the, big, for the kill, you know? Um, and it's really interesting because Alvarez fought the whole first half of the fight on his back foot and got pieced up. He got dominated, in my opinion. You know, the, the rounds were close, but Kovalev was the one saying each and every time when they were going to fight, how they were going to fight. Um, and he had all the answers for, for Alvarez's tools, um, and uh, Kovalev dominated him, in my opinion. Um, and then Alvarez started moving forward and uh, decided to fight him off of that timing because he was getting pounded all fight and wound up getting a knockout. Um, so congratulations to Alvarez. Um, now, the big question, what's going to happen in this fight, in the next fight? So obviously, um, Kovalev needs to control Alvarez's jab. He needs to faint. He needs to be fainting more. He needs to control that lead hand. He needs to be probing. He needs to keep Alvarez's hands glued to his head uh, so that he's not allowed to so he's not allowed to faint him get him out of position as you see what I talk about out of position um, he faints whoops so when he faints with the jab uh, Kovalev looks to counter the jab right so Kovalev is no longer in position to block a right hand or slip the right hand because he's committing to a jab of his own as you see here and then Alvarez says oh he's throwing a punch I can throw my right hand now Ironically, that's usually Kovalev's bread and butter, is probing the jab, getting his opponent to counter his jab, and then he goes over the top of their counter, countering their counter uh, in a brilliant fashion. Um, but that's what Kovalev needs to do, is he needs to take Alvarez's left hand away. Um, uh, in spite of the fact that I think that Kovalev was winning the jabbing war, it was doing a lot of work for Alvarez. Um, and if the fight goes 12 rounds, if they're trading jabs all fight, a lot of people, especially if you look at the way that HBO is scoring the fight, they may just give the, the tie to the runner, you know. And I don't mean that like in the literal like sense where he's running, you know. But um, tie goes to Alvarez, right? Um, and um, that's obviously that's not good for Kovalev. Um, but he needs to control that lead hand. Um, he needs to control the space between him and Alvarez better, but also he needs to find a way to work off that back foot. If he's going to be transferring his weight and moving back and forth, he's going to need to find ways when that attack comes not to lean forward into the attack because when you step back and you put all your weight on your back foot, you, you can then again transfer your weight back to your front foot by stepping forward or you can take an angle, right? Boom and then you, you bend your hip, and then you can take an angle and pivot out to your right. Um, uh, there are a lot of things you can do. You can come back with your own right hand, but he's gonna have to figure something out um, in order to prevent that, that same right hand, um, or that same timing, rather, uh, from completely destroying him uh, like it did in, this, in the first fight. Um, now, as far as a prediction goes, I remember when everyone was like really, 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 really high on Chocolatito and everyone, like I, I started doing Lomachenko breakdowns at the beginning of my, my, uh, my channel's history and then everyone was like, Chocolatito, do Chocolatito! And I remember watching his fights because I'd never really seen him fight. Um, 
I'd heard about him, but I was like, never like, ah, it's not a big deal, you know? And then I remember I started watching him and thinking, this guy is just straight overrated. He's not even a good fighter. Um, and then I watched him fight uh, Rung Sivai. And I remember seeing him in their first fight. Everyone said Chocolatito got robbed, but I thought Rung Zavai clearly outboxed him. He was controlling the distance. He was walking Chocolatito into counters. And for the duration of the rounds, Rung Zavai had control of the fight. Um, while Chocolatito did have his flurries, like he'd usually wind up making, finding a way to close the distance by about you know a minute left in the round, 40 seconds left in the round, and he'd get off some good shots. Uh, but Rung Zavai, I thought, controlled the fight, um, and he was able to walk Chocolatito into punches and just land big shots. And then I remember I made a video. It was really early on in my YouTubing, so I didn't have a lot of subscribers. I think I had maybe like 200 or something. And I made a video predicting that Rung Zavai was going to knock Chocolatito out uh, because... I think that he came into the fight more prepared. You know, I watched some interviews of his, and he was very, very, very open about the fact that he went into the first fight with a bad training camp. He didn't train hard. He thought that he was an underdog. He knew he was going to lose, and he just didn't even try that much. This was his big payday. And then we got into the fight. The fight was much easier than he thought. And I went back and rewatched it, and. After doing the film study on it, I was like, oh, wow, this guy's like at 50%, you know? Or Kamaru Usman, this motherfucker's at 30%, you know? And then I, I made a video about why I thought he was going to knock him out, but I didn't have the balls to put it out because I didn't want everyone to unsubscribe to me. Um, but um, I feel like this fight is very similar in that regard. I think that, you know, especially if you watch Alvarez's celebration like you know how happy Alvarez was to knock the crusher out to do this to the crusher you know how happy he was so I think that he went into the fight expecting to lose as well I think he went into the fight knowing he was a huge underdog and that Kovalev was a fantastic fighter and I think that only wore on him as the fight went on um, and with that said I think that Alvarez is going to come into this fight much better much more prepared and with a much better game plan than fighting Kovalev on his front foot. Um, not only putting pressure on Kovalev, do I think that that's what, exactly what Alvarez needs to do, but, but have just an overall game, a better game plan. Now the, the big question is, is Kovalev going to be ready for that? Because Alvarez didn't think he was going to be ready to fight him on the front foot. Alvarez thought he was gonna he was gonna make an easy night of it, or you know he thought that was gonna be a good source of offense for him. He could pick and choose his shots, and Kovalev dominated him on that fight, um, on that fight plan. Um, so the big question is, is Alvarez going to have a game plan that Kovalev doesn't know how to break down? That's the big question. Um, but also, is Alvarez going to come into this fight much more confident than he did in the first fight, and is he going to be able to find a way to put Kovalev out again? Um, and uh, I think that there are a lot of parallels here um, between the Chocolatito and Rung Sivai fight and, uh, and this fight. Um, my official prediction, I still believe in the Crusher. I still believe in him. I think that, hands down, you know, he is one of the best fighters of our generation. Um, of any generation, to be honest. He has probably the best offense uh, of any fighter in all of boxing. His fainting, his probing, uh, the way that he sets his shots up, um, the fluidity, the power, like just how relaxed he is. I mean, granted, he could do a little better cardio, you know, maybe work on that or work on his breathing, you know. Um, but um, I do think that he's one of the best fighters of our generation, um, in spite of the fact that, you know, he has the the loss to Andre Ward. <coughs> um, their two controversial fights. Whichever way that you think about the Andre Ward fights, you have to admit that with so many people on one side and so many people on the other, that it's controversial regardless. Um, but, um, but I do think that Kovalev is going to wind up winning this fight. I think he's you know maybe not going to be as relaxed. He's not going to be... I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. I'm really excited for this fight. 
Um, I will never, ever, ever miss a Sergey Crusher fight, even when this guy's 50 years old and still talking shit and still drinking vodka and slamming his hands into people's face. I will still watch him. But um, I'm going to go with Kovalev. I think he's going to do it. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I think that it was a, a thorough boxing lesson for the first six rounds. Um, so as long as he can keep Alvarez, the one reacting to him, as you saw, and not the other way around, as you see in this clip, we have Kovalev reacting to him and getting knocked out. Um, as long as we have whoever goes f forward, I guess I'll say it like that, whoever goes forward is going to be the one that wins this fight. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Um, all I'm going to say is that the next day be, or the night of the fight, be prepared for a, uh, a knockout breakdown because I do think this fight is going to end in knockout. Anyway, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and all that garbage. Thanks, guys.